This is an overview of my presentation. I'm going to quickly talk about um, innovation and the National Development Plan, IP as a tool for economic growth, NIPMO, the National Intellectual Property Management Office, the office that I work for, um, which is the implementing office of the Intellectual Property Rights from Publicly Financed Research and Development Act. I know it's a mouthful, but it helps us sometime. From now on, I'm just going to call it the IPR Act. And then I'm just going to show what our office has done to date. Um, I'm not, I'm actually very proud to say that I am from the Department of Science and Technology. So I am a government official. And maybe before I start, I just want to add on to what Konji said earlier. Um, with regard to the DTIIP policy, we had fantastic collaboration between industry, law firms, government departments to get the DTIIP policy, or the, the IP policy of, Southern Af of South Africa, as it's now called, to where it is today. So for those that maybe want to update, we had, as Kanji mentioned, it, a consultative framework that was published in July last year. Pub it was open for public consultations. Part of that public consultations, but we had a workshop for two days with interested stakeholders to get their views. Public consultations finished around about October last year, so there is an opportunity to ask for extensions. Um, I've heard that it was um, presented to Cabinet in April this year, and I have heard further that we should be able to see a draft IP policy within the next few months or so. So I think that was definitely a document that we can now all work together and be proud of, as opposed to the first one. So it's definitely opportunities for everyone to work together. That was not part of my presentation, my presentation. So what does our National Development Plan state? It says that innovation is the primary driver of technological growth. And I think everyone here would agree with that. What is innovation? It is taking an idea, transforming it into a new improved product, service, or process in order to successfully compete in the marketplace. And I want to add on to what Prof. Kelly just said now. It is accepted that intellectual property and its associated rights is a critical aspect for innovation and economic growth. I've tried to put IP in perspective. What does IP do? And I've decided to use examples of four universities um, across four of our provinces. For Gauteng, I chose the University of the Witwatersrand. They've got what they called Smart Spot Quality PTY Limited. It's a spin-off company that they've started. And as you may know, <coughs> tuberculosis affects about 35 million people globally. And what the Witt University and the National Health Laboratory System done, has done is they've developed a TB check. This spot check is used prior to testing a person for um, tuberculosis to make sure that the machine that they're using is actually correct. The IP that they've de uh, developed is they've got patented technology and they've registered the Spinet company in 2015. But what is the impact of all of this? The impact is that they made sure that about 78,000 tests of about roughly 3 million tests so they save them from being inaccurate, making sure that people are diagnosed correctly and they are not dying or infecting other people or put unnecessarily on drug management um, and they don't really need it. So TB Check is currently shipped to more than 22 countries globally and making an impact to South Africa and South African people. We now move to the University of Limpopo. Previously, there was no successful mass propagation of some of the Strelitzia species. Researchers at the University of Limpopo has been able to optimize the in vitro conditions, maximizing the oxidation browning, and now they are able to mass produce Strelitzia plant over a shorter period, and they are able now to export this beautiful flower to other countries as well. The Central University of Technology in the Free State has got what we call a technology station. Um, this technology station is the center for rapid prototyping and manufacturing. They've got aesthetic and functional designs wherein they print um, reconstructive limbs, they re reconstructive surgery to state patients 
who do not have access to medical aids and who suffer from severe facial disfigurement due to cancer and accidents are receiving these limbs that are 3D printed. Ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me, this is all making an impact in South Africa's life and contributing to our economic growth. As I knew that Prof Kelly would be here, I didn't use his IP as an example, but I also used University of Cape Town. We all know the devastating effects that shack fires have in our community. University of Cape Town developed a low-cost fire detection device that is, coupled with, that is coupled with radio frequency, and that as soon as there is a rapid increase in um, heat, a horrible alarm goes off, notifying the people within the shack and the surrounding shacks that there is a potential for, a, that there is a shack fire. This gives the people then enough time to evacuate. And I have heard that um, they are now working with the fire departments to link it up so that the fire department is immediately notified with GPS coordinates of where this shack fire has taken place. So the safety and security and the quality of our lives of our people are improved. University of Cape Town has also established a spin-out company that is currently employing 10 permanent people and since November 2014 has manufactured and distributed about 10,000 detectors. That's all just fascinating stories that is coming out from our universities and that was funded by your tax money um, and putting it, hopefully making an impact on all of our lives. So the legislation that is trying to make sure that our tax money is used and converted into an IP that makes an impact is the IPR Act. No, it didn't just come because government felt like putting another legislation in place because that's what we do. It was considered, it was identified in the Science and Technology White Paper of 1996, went through a few policy processes and what came out was the establishment of NIPMO and the Technology Innovation Agency. This is by no means a legislation that is unique. It's quite actually heavily based on the Bay Doll legislation of the United States. And various other countries has taken that route, trying to secure their publicly financed um, intellectual property that emanates from publicly financed research and development. And that is the objective of this legislation. The more effective utilization of that intellectual property. To also establish the office that I work for and an IP fund, and also to, to provide for the establishment of offices of technology transfer. These offices I'll speak to you about just a little bit later. The objects of this legislation is to make sure that intellectual property that emanates from publicly financed research is identified protected where applicable, because not all disclosures would be protected, utilized and commercialized for the benefit of the Republic. You might see the comment is this is a very inwardly focused legislation trying to improve the lives of the Republic, the people of the Republic. It also says that human ingenuity and creativity must be rewarded and that there must be preferential access of these technologies to small enterprises and triple E, double E entities. Who does this apply to? It applies to the recipients of public funding, which is usually your higher education institutions. Currently, we've got 26 universities, um, science councils, this is the HSRC, ARC, MRC, Medical Research Council, and then private individuals and companies who receive public funds and conduct research and development with those funds. The legislation brought six massive changes about. The first one was IP ownership. Previously, you could negotiate um, IP ownership between the two collaborative parties or between anyone. After the IPR Act, there's mainly three IP ownership provisions, but it mainly states that he who creates will own. So if you are, for example, university, you receive funding from the government, you create, you as the university create the intellectual property, the university will own that intellectual property. There's also provisions for co-ownership and then provisions for this legislation not to apply if you pay for the full cost of the research and development, i.e. none of our tax money is going into it, we're not subsidizing your research and development, this legislation would not apply. The second massive change this legislation brought about was the commercialization of IP. 
Previously, the majority of the, the R&D was commercialized through publications. Now, after this legislation, we're not saying you should stop publicizing your work. All we're saying is, is maybe protect, if applicable, first before you make it public. Um, the third massive change that this legislation brought about is briefly government did not really have an idea of what it is funding. Now, after this legislation, all recipients of public funds has to report to NIPMO twice a year on what intellectual property does it have and how is it taking it forward? How is it utilizing it? How is it commercializing its intellectual property? Previously, you were also allowed to, oh, got a German counterpart, they're willing to pay a million rand, take it. Don't worry, I'll sell it to you, you can take it and make it your own. Never mind that South African government paid 10 million rand to get it where it was. Now, after this legislation was, came into effect, you can't just assign or sell your intellectual property without NIPMO approval being given. Um, I know we government, and I know it takes, in everything, government takes a long time. However, if you do not get a response from NIPMO within 30 days, your transaction is deemed to be approved and you can go on. So it is one of the legislative um, risk requirements. So we will not hinder your process to utilize your intellectual property. And then state access to rights. Previously, the state had access to intellectual property through the Patents Act. Now, this has just been broadened to all types of intellectual property that is fund publicly funded. The fifth massive change that this legislation brought about is benefit sharing of the IP creators. So if Prof. Kelly wants to be a millionaire and still be a professor at the UCT, in terms of this legislation, before the act came about, he would have not really received any benefits from the revenue that accrues from his IP. However, after this legislation came about, an IP creator is entitled to at least 20% of the first 1 million rand and 30% of the net revenue that after of all revenue that accrues to the institution, such as the university. The final change that this legislation brought about, and which I mentioned earlier, was this establishment of the Offices of Technology Transfer. Before the legislation, some institutions had a, some institutions had a form of this office. After this legislation, it is mandated for every university and science council to have this Office of Technology Transfer. And they've got a responsibility list as long as my arm. They are the people that make sure that the disclosures are reported to NIPMO. They negotiate on behalf of the IP creator to, to enter into licenses. They make sure that the IP attorneys are contacted so that the specs are drafted, that they are filed, that the renewal fees are paid. They do novelty searches, freedom to operate searches, market analysis, the list is endless. And, and NIPMO sees these offices of technology transfer almost as an extension of the office within these, environment, within these institutions. So what has NIPMO done to date? The legislation came about in 2 August 2010, and we do not um, apply this retrospectively. So this legislation is only for intellectual property that was generated after 2 August 2010. Since then, we've received 1,300 disclosures of which about 20% got a granted right, which is quite impressive because it takes about at least a, a year or so to get a complete patent specific or to get a complete patent in South Africa, and two to three years to get a registered trademark in South Africa. So 20% of our database has got a registered right. About 7.2% has been commercialized. This is not in line with international trends. We know that international trends are about 15 to 30%, but for intellectual property that was generated only after 2 August 2010, this is not particularly bad statistics. We've granted 85 exclusive licenses and 43 licenses to SMMEs and triple EWE entities. The revenue that was received by institutions is in excess of 6.5 million rand. 
We are also, as NIPMO, re as government, we realise that we can't put an obligation in place that you have to establish an Office of Technology Transfer, yet not assist you with financing them. So over the past six years, NIPMO has provided just shy of 100, just over 140 million rand to 28 institutions and two regional offices, and we created 104 contract positions, and we'll hopefully create another 28 in this financial year. We also provided funding of just over 100 million rand in terms of the IP fund to 24 institutions. What is fantastic about the statistics means that 24 institutions has got an active IP portfolio. But you will say, okay, this doesn't actually make sense. You've invested 200, 250 million rand and your return is only 6.5. True. The IP fund did not only provide funding for IP that was created after 2 August 2010. We realized as government there is an obligation, intellectual property protection is expensive, and that there is an obligation on, on government to make sure that all intellectual property, prior to the IPR Act and post the IPR Act, receives this protection. So there is a bit more. We also know that um, it was important for us to establish these offices for technology transfer. So high capital, in, um, high capital investment now, and we hope to taper it off in the coming years. What does our database look like? I'm finished. What does our database look like? About 70% of all disclosures that is reported to NIPMO is an invention or a patent. Trade secrets, mostly from the Nuclear Energy Corporation of South Africa. Plant breeders' rights, mostly from the ARC. And should you want to contact our office, please do. We are excellent on emails if our emails are working. Um, not so good on telephones, even if they are working. Thank you so much.